Land. It's all around us, but too often we pay it no attention. Yet in our small and densely populated island, it's arguably our most valuable asset. We use land to grow food and trees. It's where much of our wildlife lives. We build houses, towns and cities on it. We travel through it on roads and railways. Land collects water, absorbs sun, rain and storms, protecting us from extreme events and supplying our most essential needs. And as time goes on, we demand more and more from it. We want nature recovery, more trees, more food production, more houses, cleaner water, and to get to carbon net zero. These ambitions can be contradictory, creating conflict between people and policies and intense pressures on land. We end up making mistakes like building houses on floodplains or planting trees in the wrong place. And at present, we have no way of resolving these conflicts. The planning system deals with some of these issues, but not all. Farming is disconnected from policies for nature, and we struggle to put new infrastructure in place. So what can we do? Land is precious and in short supply. We must use it well, wisely, and with the long term in mind, with each acre fulfilling its potential. Over the last year, momentum has been building for developing a land use framework for England. In February, leaders in land use met to begin its design, learning from Scotland and Wales, who already have such frameworks, where they're making a difference. The framework for England's land would establish principles to govern land use decision making with multifunctionality and concern for future generations foremost among them. Based on the best data and mapping available, the framework would mediate conflicts over different uses of land, both within and between government departments and on the ground between all those who want to use land. The central purpose of the framework would be to coordinate and align our existing objectives and plans, preventing perverse impacts and resolving potential conflicts. The framework would also facilitate the government's levelling up ambitions, ensuring that no place in the country is left behind by helping direct, devolve and join up resources and money to the places that need it most. And even more, in the context of COVID-19, a land use framework would help the country move from recovery to renewal. This is a huge moment for us all. We have found that the appetite to experiment in counties and regions to try out what's possible and what works is present all around the UK. We now have the opportunity to create an economy that works for every place in the country and a countryside that is both productive and ecologically resilient supporting flourishing ecosystems and tackling climate change while meeting our needs for food, housing, water and clean air.